last month, but we have an exceptional episode for you today. I'm Gwen Novak, the chef and owner here at No Time to Cook, and I'm here with my good friend Brooke Brown Fritz, hey. Nikki Goldstein, hey. and our special guest today, Hannah Mann. Hi. I know you guys know Hannah's stuff. If you are ever on Facebook, you have seen those crazy girls, and I mean, yeah, I think I stalked you for a little while. Her creativity <laughs> is phenomenal. Her charcuterie boards are just off the hook. And so today she's joining us, and we are just going to build yeah. one for us. And then Nikki brought three amazing wines, yes. and Brooke and I are going to sit here and eat and drink while you That's know, right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> to relax. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So what are we drinking here, Nikki, to start? Well, we're doing French today because we, yeah. we figured um, with our wonderful wine and cheese. Wine and cheese French. or charcuterie <laughs> reward. We would do a little French today. So this is a Sancerre. Uh, this is out of, of course, out of France. You're talking the Loire, the Loire Valley. I told you I can't talk today. Right. Save my life. Sorry, people. I'm going to be mispronouncing everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of brought a little bit of something from three different areas of France. Okay. So when you're talking about Sancerre, you're mainly Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, sometimes they do use a Pinot Noir, but you can, you're, you know, just blend it a little bit. But it's mainly Sauvignon Blanc. So you're getting those lovely, um, sometimes it can be really citrusy, yep. sometimes it's going to be green apple, a little bit of pear in there, so we are thinking this is going to go perfect with some of these cheeses. What do you guys think of it though? Well, I love it's it. Very yeah. It's very good. It's very crisp. It's yeah. very crisp. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to see what cheese you, you oh. paired with this. I'm just excited to watch her and see yeah. if I can figure anything <laughs> out and learn anything. <laughs> so my question is, I'm horrible at these. We were just talking about this. <laughs> I try, you know, you've got that holiday or, you know, people entertaining. coming over. Yeah. Entertaining. And I do love to entertain, but I'm from the old school of, like, cheese and crackers. Yeah. So tell me, I'm not artistic. We, I'm I wrong like, with that. I like to open the bottle for it and go the day. I want to know how to do this, though, so that I pretend to my guests that I do know how yes. to do this. Tell me how to do this. Um, the main thing is, is your assortment of cheeses. We always like to use, um, we try to stick with domestically sourced, like small craft creameries, American made, um, but there are a couple of international cheeses we can't not include just because of how well they pair with the wines that we're going to be drinking. And just in general, they're really excellent, high quality cheeses. So you want to make sure you have a variety of soft, semi-soft, hard cheeses, a nice spread. So we have a good spread here. And then the main thing is going to be just a variety of everything. So different fruits, different nuts. So you kind of want to choose one or two things when you're buying for entertaining. Otherwise, it can get expensive <laughs> trying to buy everything. Yeah. And then it's all about the way you cut things and the way you layer them. Okay. And then that's going to be the presentation. We have our garnishes here. We have our different fruits. Um, and you'll see when we're doing the, the different cuts. And then once we lay those out, it really just all comes together. Okay. So you just play around with different styles of cuts, different styles of cutting the fruits, and then folding. We'll show you how to fold your prosciutto. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and that'll really help it. We don't have any flat laying salami okay. here, so that'll help <laughs> it take it up a notch as well. So it's all about just the different tweaks you can make when you're putting it together. Okay. And we'll teach you some of those. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Let's get started. Let's get started. Let's do it. I'm hungry. How about you? I'm girl. Hungry. Girl always. <laughs> it's been a long and, day. Um, <laughs> When it comes to cheese, I'm very hungry. <laughs> I'm one of those people. I do love going to the store. Uh, something I like, because cheese gets expensive, going to the store and just grabbing one different yes. variety of cheese. Me and my husband love to have wine and cheese on the porch. It's just something we do. We have a little fire pit. Uh, so if I bring a new one in the mix every now and then, it's fun, but it doesn't get too pricey. Well, and especially because if it's just the two of you, when you're buying cheeses, yes. a lot of the times you just want to look at the weight on your cheeses. Like this one has the serving size is one ounce, but when you okay. buy it, it's like four serving sizes. Right. So if you look at the cheeses that are already cut and then priced out by the ounces, you can get those like five or six dollar cuts of good cheese, but they're just smaller weight. Oh. And that's all you're gonna need for like one or two people. Absolutely. So you don't have to necessarily buy the whole the whole chunk of cheese. Like a lot of times they will sell like a half of this mm -hmm. for like four or five dollars, and then you right. can cut it and have it for you guys just to taste. And if you find a good cheese shop, you can taste before yes. you buy it, too. Because you hate to spend a lot of money on and not something like that you don't yes. like. It. Yes. 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 That no. is the worst. Yeah. Unfortunately, anything, there's not anything know. around here. But <laughs> <laughs> you but definitely yes. will learn like what you do and what you don't like. So if you guys like really strong cheeses, mm -hmm. like really hard cheeses, just getting some one new uh, out there cheese to try and then venturing from there. Good, yeah. Best cheese of my life. 
I was in Holland at a cheese farm. Yeah. They made clogs and cheese. Clogs and cheese. That was the most entertaining experience <laughs> of my life. And we, and we got to sit and eat cheese after we watched people whittle clogs. <laughs> Let me tell you, Holland, yeah, then, Holland's then, where it's at. <laughs> There's a lot of other things that happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what Apparently else are you doing? The street <laughs> I behave myself, okay? <laughs> but, so this looks like Manchego from the uh, Rhine. Yes, so Ooh. this one's going to be an eight-month Manchego, yeah. so it'll pair really nicely with just about everything. We say Manchego is one of our really versatile cheeses. Um, it pairs really well with bold reds, it pairs really well with a nice dry white, so it's a very good cheese to have on your boards because it's so versatile. So this one's eight months. Usually they start them at like four months to all the way up to like a year. Okay. The more mature they are, the more like crystallization yeah. you're going to see. So it's going to be more caramel, more nutty. We like to stick with an eight to 12 month. Just personally, I like that nuttiness. I don't like it too, um, when it's too young, it tends to blend flavors into like another cheese. It just doesn't have that robust flavor, the nuttiness and like the caramel notes that you get with a really good Manchego. So it's a good one to look anything over like eight months. It's a fun, um, it's unique, especially if people haven't tried an older, more mature version. So it's always a good one to have on your boards. This one, if you guys want to try it, it would always pair well. But yeah, we, yeah go ahead. Yeah. It's going on this one, so you're good. Yeah, okay. You want some? Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, you saw me eyeballing it. <laughs> when we cut them, these ones are the only ones um, out of this group that wow. you can't eat the rind. So it's that wax rind. You can either have it in the red or the brown. So we cut off the sides, and then um, you just can't eat the top of the rinds here. We cut them in triangle pieces. Sometimes, recently, I've been having fun cutting them even smaller and layering them on top of everything else. So we just cut them. Sometimes they break too, so it's sad. Mm -hmm. So just make sure you cut lots of slices. <laughs> um, and then layer them on top of everything else just to give it a little bit more dimension. So I'll cut them now so that way you guys can try them with this one, but I'll save the actual layering for a little bit later. Oh, this is one of my favorite, yeah. also favorite it's pieces. So, yeah. it's, it's, so delicious. it's why we can't stick to exclusively domestic cheeses right. because it's so hard to count out Manchego, especially with wines. It just pairs so beautifully. It does. That sheep's milk. And it's just that gorgeous rind. It looks like so on tire tracks. Uh, yes. That's how you know it's the real deal, Manchego. Did you notice it took down the uh, citrus from the wine? Mm -hmm. It sure did. It really did. It made it like buttery. Yep. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's exactly how I'd say it. It has very buttery, very like nutty notes, especially with the older age ones. It's got like a crystallization. Mm -hmm. It's such a fun cheese. It's one yes. of my favorites. All right, so we jumped ahead a little bit. <laughs> you cut up a few for us. Tell us what you cut up. Okay, so this one we have right here, and then your guys' tasters over here. It's an eight month. Gruyere, it's cave aged. Um, this one's a cow's milk, so where your manchego was a sheep's milk, this one is a cow's milk. So it's gonna be, it also, we're kind of sticking with that hard, savory. It's a semi soft, but it does have a very nutty texture just as well as the manchego did. So it'll pair really well with your white wine, it'll pair really well with this next one we have. Mm -hmm. So it's a very mild cheese when you bite into it, but it does have a little bit of tasting notes that linger on the tongue that are a little bit sharper, but it's, it's a relatively smooth cheese. So um, we brought it because it pairs really well with your French wines, but it is a Switzerland-based cheese. Oh, awesome. And then we're moving on now to your soft cheese. Soft cheeses. <laughs> Cannot talk today. I more wines. Swear to God, there's only one glass, so I need to talk. you got to show the heart-shaped one. Okay, so this one's heart-shaped because it's... Um, so we had it left over from Valentine's. It's actually from a California Bay Area Creamery called Cowgirl Creamery. It is a triple cream brie. It's one of my favorites. Um, they're, all of their creams, like all of their cheeses that they put out are amazing. We have this wash rind here from them as well. Um, it just happens to be heart shaped because it was Valentine's Day, so we had it from that. When we cut it, um, it is really good with your sparklings or your rosés. So it'll be really good, but it just has such a beautiful look inside with so much texture and cream. Um, like all cheeses, you want to let them come to room temperature. So this one, when it gets soft, it's just like butter. It melts into your mouth. It's so, so delicious. So we'll put one here for that. So you're not supposed to just eat them immediately like I do. Got no, 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 no. no. Patience. You, you can't eat them right out of the fridge. Um, a lot of the tasting notes and the flavor just comes out 30 to depending on how thick your block of cheese is or how little you cut it. Like these ones, 
take like 30 minutes to come to room temperature because they're already cut. Yeah, no but idea. if you're big blocks, you want to let them come to room temperature so no that way idea. all like the actual notes come out. Because when you eat them cold, it just tastes like cold cheese. And it's, it's kind of sad. It is, it's, it's, yeah. it's not the way they're supposed to taste. Well, yeah, so if I'm you don't like it, cheese. yeah, I'm going to hear a piece of cheese. Yeah, no more. Here, we're here to educate you on your cheese. <laughs> Well, it's, it's like stopping the vines to them. Yeah, it's it's, it's called a brief. You so, let some breathe. wines yeah. got a brief, especially like your craft cheeses, mm -hmm. not like your commercial ones um, or just like your really um, packaged cheeses, um, like your craft cheeses are going to need to breathe, kind of mm -hmm. let out. Most of them are packaged in paper that still allows them to breathe while they're in the fridge. Um, but I know you did uh, have a store cheese yeah. recently, actually. So. Um, you do want to store them in parchment paper, not just put them in a Ziploc or anything like that. Yeah. So when you take them out, they still have time to breathe. <laughs> you know, Gwen, I you, you, might not, you might actually I like a cheese. lot of these cheeses that you've <laughs> abused if you didn't like them before. If Gwen taught me the magic of parchment paper. I really did not know. I was yep. always using aluminum, and like, you know. It's your best friend, parchment paper. I do paper. parchment for everything. Oh, I do like parchment. Yes. yes. Yeah, I so don't right. even use my aluminum foil. Yeah, exactly. You get the, like, pre-cut sheets, so you're mm -hmm. not even dealing with pulling it off, it's yeah. it's a game changer, especially if you're storing cheeses like we are, or you can get the cheese paper. But I would love to see your fridge. <laughs> I would just love this cheese, the wall it's of cheese. cheese. Segment two. <laughs> we have a cheese fridge, it's just cheese. <laughs> when we invade her home. <laughs> so while you're cutting that up, we are drinking a oh, French yeah. Rosé Slafette. It's one of the newer on the market. Yum. Uh, this is actually Sam Tropez Rosé, which is there's not a lot that are out, I should say, in the American market. Yeah. I mean, there's tons in Central Bay. We just don't have them here. But you can tell that if you like a really dry rosé, Central Bay makes some really nice dry rosés. I mean, this, I, I don't really like this a lot. Yeah. It is not that there are some French rosés out there that have a little bit more sweeter yeah. notes. And this is not one of them. This is right. the drier rosés. Probably why I like it. <laughs> so I was going to say, you I'm know, I'm a big fan of the sweet, sweet wine. There's nothing wine wrong with the sweet, and they're yeah. not necessarily sweet. When we say sweet, it's not like Moscato sweet. Right. But you're just saying it's not as dry right. as what we're drinking right yeah. now. Um, this, yeah, definitely your Provence and some of those have that, because they're mm. Grenache, which mm -hmm. is a sweeter grape. So you're going to have a little bit sweeter of a rosé in those. Yeah. This is nice, crisp, and refreshing. It's lovely. I'm going to pour it. And it is a really good wine that's going to pair well with those ones. Um, one of them kind of crumbled, but if you want to grab a bite and just take it, we've had. Oh, my bad. All good. All good. All good. Um, I'll give. Uh, we've I'll give had them well. sitting out here, so they've come to relatively room temperature, so you can give it a shot. That cream should be coming out right now. So they are. There's some of them crumbled. We had to break the nice little heart shape, but we've got one there. I love. Sometimes you gotta break a heart. <laughs> Yum, I'm loving this brief. Isn't it amazing? A lot of them on the market, um, especially if they're like commercial or like any of like, not that there's anything wrong with like the supermarket briefs, but a lot of them are only a double cream. So with this one, and you can tell when it's fully together, we cut yeah. it in half. It's just got such height to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that triple cream really makes a difference when you're tasting mm -hmm. it. It just tastes so much more buttery. The rind itself, when you eat it all together as a bite, yeah. it's not like regular brief. Some of the rinds can get a little bit, um, off-putting, some people yeah. eat them with the rind. This one, it really just helps complement the flavor. Yeah, okay. people ask that all the time. Can I eat the rinds? I'm like, yeah, like really please do. Like, please <laughs> do. Yeah, but if you really hate it, you don't, don't have, have to. to. Right. right. There are no cheese rules about this. No, it's it's whatever you want. Yeah. You, but, you know, the cheese police is edible. Like, I think the cheese police and the wine police are together because well, they like, share a building. People always yeah. tell me, you know, well, I usually <laughs> put an ice cube in my wine. I know that's bad. I'm like, do you enjoy it? Then that's all that matters. Right. right. Like, do you enjoy the cheese rind? If you don't, don't. It's there are no rules, people. Exactly. Right. But you know, this is the crazy thing, though. Uh, there's so much about food and wine it has become so snotty and snobby in that people think that you know I can only drink this with that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it becomes like, intimidating. Literally, I tell right. people all the time. Treat what yourself. you like, drink what you like, and to hack with people who judge you. Right. Except for me, <laughs> who abuses all cheeses by Ziploc bags. I will change. Stop doing that. I know. I'll I'm get you a cheese bag downstairs. I'm going to change. Okay. <laughs> I know you have cheese paper downstairs, but. I was just saying, um, I do have the mesh bags. I have the mesh bags that I use for my, for my produce and things. Is no. that what I should use with the parchment? Well, you know, can't just leave the parchment wrap in my drawer. They just wrap them in parchment loosely. Like you can loosely, um, can it here? I, yeah, I have the stickers, and they hardly hold it together because it's like wax, so it doesn't oh. even stick. So it's just enough to where it doesn't flop open. But you can also loosely wrap them in parchment, 
and then put them in a Ziploc container, or not a Ziploc container, a Tupperware, Tupperware. container. Oh, okay. Um, because yeah. a Tupperware container is still going to allow the airflow, even if it's airtight, mm -hmm. um, as long as you have the parchment. If you were to just throw them in the Tupperware container yeah. and close it off, you'd get them, um, most of them would turn like very, very like hard on the outside and mm -hmm. just would not go well. See, I always yes. put them in the, like I said, I always put them in the, the bags, the yeah. little mesh bags, because that's what I was trying to do. Is not, yeah. But I, I don't want them like, you know, <laughs> roll off and yeah. yeah. Yeah, just like wrap them and put them in a Tupperware, yeah. and then you can put the Tupperware okay. wherever in your fridge. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you want to be careful too. If you're storing really stinky cheese next to a milder cheese, yeah, that's if my next question. They can, you know, the one will pick up the other. They're going to cross cheese. You. I you're just, you're gonna yes, cross I just contaminated. <laughs> I just had a bourbon aged cheese. Stop it. I wasn't a big fan, actually. What? <laughs> I wasn't a big fan. What? Well, I are over here like, oh from my the, god, the bourbon girl. I know, but I didn't love it. I hear the words, but I don't know what you're saying. So I got that, and then I, uh, I, I zip one back in the because there was not that much left. I got, not I much say, left. Thank God, here to, to tell you all how to store cheese. Learn from my mistakes. Listen, I'm, good in, other, hey, I'm good in other areas of my life. What thank the, you. What did the cheese ever do to you? After today, I'm gonna be better. But um, no, it it made all the other cheeses that were in that bag taste like the bourbon cheese. Well, it's like it's mm. like if you're a blue cheese person, you feel? get a very very stinky blue cheese. Yeah, yeah you can't store them together. I used you're to not gonna like cheese. the other cheeses yeah. that you have. Is at this that blue point. cheese right here? So that one is actually, and I put some tasting up there for you guys. That one is not a blue cheese. It is a goat cheese. Um, it is. It's called humble fog. Yep. When we did our boxes, I wanted to put it in there, but I didn't because some people just aren't sure about it. Goat cheese. Because it looks also like a blue cheese. And some people, if they were to buy it themselves, they wouldn't because it looks like something that they don't think they like. Yeah. Oh, like our uh, cameraman. <laughs> and he's shaking his yeah. head. shaking his head. It, oh, looks, like a, talking about it like, looks like a blue it. cheese. But um, the thin line that you see in the middle right here, it's actually a vegetable ash. So totally edible. Um, you can't even really taste it. It just kind of combines with the flavor. This one's a goat cheese. It's very creamy. It has almost like some floral notes in it, but it's got a very crisp, citrusy finish. So you won't get any weird flavors on the back of your mouth. Um, it's just got that nice, creamy goat cheese I'm excited. with some notes <laughs> in it. Um, it goes very well with the rosé, though, so that's why oh, I put it oh, out. Okay. So is it called Humboldt Fog because it kind of looks foggy in the middle? Yes. I'm that. sure. <laughs> Stop. I do love that. Right? And they put out a couple of, they have different flavors of them, too, that they recently started putting out. They have one that has more herbs in it. They have Thank one um, that's a little bit younger, so not as mature, not as robust of a flavor. Um, yeah, they have some with lavender. It's very good. All of the, they're from Cypress Grovers, mm -hmm. and they're going to be a, another California like creamery. Mm -hmm. All of their stuff is goat cheese. It's so, it's so good. It's very mild. What do you mean by, like, Whoa, flavor. Yes, mm -hmm. it's very, most goat cheese so like I, that too. But I love Get your cheese. attention. Yeah. Yeah. And some people are very much like, I don't like goat cheese because they're one or the other. You. Yeah. It changes the rosé too. Really, I mean, for, doesn't hurt it at all. <laughs> oh, wow. No, it, it really is, that's a really great pairing. When you pairing. say dry, well, it actually, you know, yeah. kind of refreshes it a yeah. little bit. Is it more of a berry oh. flavor? Uh -huh. <laughs> But you know, too, what I find people they don't like goat again, cheese. Down to the wine. Gotta try it. <laughs> a lot of times people Darn. don't like goat cheese because they don't like the texture. The Often that's because they haven't let it sit at room temperature long enough. Yes, so, so when they cut it, it's just like crumbly, crumbly. almost like a feta, yeah. like a really crumbly feta. So like if you let it sit and you let it like actually breathe, let it come to temperature and it's spreadable, it's mm -hmm. it's much different. It's see, a much different cheese. See, yeah. for me, it's the, the goat cheese has to have some sort of flavor. I can't just have like... The plain, yeah. Right. I, I have it's like peanut something. butter. You're like my touching the throat. It's goat cheese and fig. Yum. Oh my god. Well, there's Yum. a pepper or something back there. You were saying ash, but like in the very there, there's like a little pepper note. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. It's the vegetable, vegetable. ash yeah. and the rind. So if you look, the rind itself is also rubbed with that vegetable ash. It has that layer. So when you're eating them all together, <laughs> if you get a bite that's got the rind in the end, you will get that little bit of. Um, that is good like savory aftertaste. So we're gonna let you cut a little bit. And while you're cutting, we're just gonna fire a bunch of questions at you. So you cut away. <laughs> Can I just say, first of all,
Oh man, I love that. I love that cheese, and I've never had it before. But that I, I read about it all the time. Well, and you and heard I've me never rave about it, it last yes. time. Yeah. I was like, I need to bring it this time. So I have to say, I am not. I'm one of those people who doesn't always love goat cheese, but that was I'm outstanding. Not outstanding. Yeah. outstanding. Goat I'm cheese? not. No, it's it's it can be very twangy. You know, I'm. Hey, like, acid is a me. Or we gotta. Yeah. You know what they it's say, bad. it's not yeah, that it bad. That was delicious. Well, and um, you pair it with wines, like especially like yes. this one, it has a citrus aftertone in the cheese, so it'll balance out any citrus or dryness in yeah. wine very, very nicely. Okay. Yeah, you really do have to be careful with what you're eating, but I will say it's Ooh, been a, a trick of a lot of, um, yeah, they use, it's an old French trick. It really no, is that you pair the cheese with the wine because sometimes if your wine did not come out as you wanted, mm -hmm. the cheese will hide it. Yeah. It will, yeah. You'll yeah. have a more mm -hmm. acidic base cheese or you'll mm -hmm. have a smoother cheese that'll help right. kind of hide the acidity. A lot of the times yeah. with cheeses, it's some people will say, say pair like with like or pair contrasting ones. So it just depends on what flavor you're going for because your pairing can absolutely change yes. the um, sip of wine that you mm -hmm. have next. Love that. Now, again, you know, French, Italy, or sorry, France, Italy, you know, when you're traveling, like, wines over there is not about just sitting there and drinking wine. It's about what you eat. It's right. about the, everything. The experience. Oh. The experience. Yes. The full and that's what they do. And they, they don't rush you ever. No. Oh my gosh. No. You can no. take your pretty time all day. That's what I love about that. So my, um, my coworker and I were at a, on a trip to Bordeaux, mm -hmm. and he does not like cheeses of any kind. Ah, say it's not a, it's not a good thing ah, for his body, okay? So I'm just leave it at that. Poor guy, though, is in France, and those people harass him because it's like, oh, you don't like this cheese. Yeah. They went out to go find it. They're like, oh, no, I'm going to find a cheese you like. You like cheese. <laughs> I would do that, <laughs> just though. I'm like, I'm determined. I would it, it makes me think of a scene of the Grinch where they, like, make him eat everything to make him like something. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably your friend. Yeah. Can I take a quick break? Because I want to make sure that everybody sees this technique. I saw oh, Hannah do yeah. this when she came to our class, and it's, I've never seen it done before, and I love it. It is a cool way to make a different texture right yeah, I was watching that too. I was yeah. like, what is that? It especially works really well for like your aged cheddars that are already crumbly. So that way like you can get a different texture that's not cube cheese. Yeah. Because okay. we don't have we don't have cube cheese on the board. It's, <laughs> not, it's, it's not cube cheese. It's not natural. It's not natural. It's not pretty. It's not the way that the cheese is supposed to texture. So if you have something like this, this is Face Rock, which is a Wisconsin based creamery. Um, it's two years aged cheddar, so it's going to be nice and sharp. It's already got a crumbly texture. You can see, even if you were to just cut it regular, like it doesn't even cut slices perfect. or cubes yeah. perfect. Like it's got already cracks in it. So this helps. This is actually a cheddar knife. So if you're looking for cheese knives, this is a cheddar <laughs> knife. Looks like one. Um, <laughs> so you take like the front piece and you just crumble it, and it helps. Love it. Give so it that texture. Too glad you watched. I right know. <laughs> you guys can try it. It's an excellent cheese. <laughs> Um, and that way you can give the texture, but there's still most of the chunks come out pretty, like just finger grab and go. We'll move these back because, like I said, I rearranged it five thousand times. I love that you yes. cut your cheese. I just like mostly because it's like corn. sweet though. Because one thing we find like, too on mm. cheese boards mm. is that if the cheese isn't cut for our guests, it's hard to really, enjoy. It's hard to. They're very reticent to cut it for themselves, and then. Some lovely cheeses just never get consumed because people are scared to to cut into it. I've well, been to weddings and stuff like that too, where yeah. it just sits. It sits. Oh, well, that's like the, let the, me tell you who's not oh afraid to break into that. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the, uh, but the yeah, you're right. Cheese ball. Let's be real, because you always have the person that makes the cheese ball. Yeah. And it's they delicious. they spend so much time on that cheese ball, but nobody wants to cut into it. it. It's until the one person does, and it's like game yeah. on. But yeah. I'm with you. It is like. So if it's a mental thing, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So if you're the host, no one wants to be the one to do it. Yeah. yeah. Be the one. Help. You know, cut the cheese. Well, and the only <laughs> cheeses that you really so would bust. when you're at a party. Cut. We're near the party. Cut I've the had cheese. Way too much to drink There's no shame. Tell we're just so giggly over here. <laughs> There's no shame in cutting the cheese at a public event. Well, and we put this one on. <laughs> And it's not cut, but it's not cut for a reason because it's soft, soft. And you want to like, mm -hmm. you want to display that. And are those uh, flowers? So oh, this awesome. is called Alp. So A-L-P, like Alp, like the Alps. Yeah. Because it's from Austria. So it's um, cow's milk as well. It's called Alp Blossom. It is rubbed with lavender, rose petals, and then marigold. So all edible florals. So the rind is completely edible. 
use? Um, it's definitely one where you look at it, if you open it, especially when you're smelling cheeses, like it does have a very floral, like very, like it hits you. It hits you. It's a strong smell, but the taste of it's a very mild twist. Yeah. So it pairs yeah. well with everything. It's not, it's not something that you would think would taste the way it looks. It's, it it's a really like good cheese. Bomb. Like yeah, don't throw it in the back. But it, yeah. Well, and it's. Don't throw it in the back. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good, though. You drink it with wine while eating it. It looks like pineapple. No difference. It's that one. At the first glance. It does. Pineapple. Okay, I see the pineapple. You know, like that, like the texture outside. It does, like, right. like the I more you so. pull out yeah. the things. I mean, really pretty pineapple. But. Well, and sometimes it'll, depending on, like, their seasonal rotation of flowers, it'll have blue in there. Yeah. Um, this one's got more marigolds and, like, the dried roses that you can see. So it depends okay. on the time of year that they make it and what edible flowers are, like, available. So they'll rub it with pansies or, like, any of the lavender that has the actual flowers on it, cool. mint flowers. So they'll rub it with anything. So the color of the rind changes. Love it. So it's really cool. Awesome. Um, it's a nice display one, but it's also soft enough to where you can cut it. Yeah. So, like, Manchego is never one that we would put in a box <laughs> or a board where no one could cut yeah. it, especially if you have, like, if you plan on just taking out the board and serving it to people. So, if you're not choosing to cut a cheese, because sometimes if you're storing it overnight or anything, you don't want to cut it till day of, you want to make sure that they're soft cheeses that people can just easily cut into if you chose not to cut it. Perfect. Which is no one so, did you guys try it? No, but I, I need to, I'm like Brooke all of a sudden. I need to more <laughs> oh, oh, right. just a more drink. Just a smidge. Because we're going to have a red, so we do have a red. red. So you got to You got to try it with that one. You can have to try these cheese well. with everything. Yeah. yeah, don't be rude. Don't be rude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so clearly someone's the instigator. And, and it smells different. Me. <laughs> so if like somebody's um, all right. a smeller, because most cheeses you either look at, you what smell first. Everyone does something different. It depends on like how much of a cheese connoisseur. Because I'm sure, Gwen, you always smell your cheese. Yeah, I do. I do. I, I never do. Exactly. You I never, never do? do? I never do, but I mean. But you also probably like, haven't had like, something that's like, oh, wow. Right, but <laughs> this is like, what is the, is it's, this a marigold that's smelling? Or it smells like honey. It's like a mixture of like the marigold and then like the lavender when it's dried. It's almost got both of those blend together. has that floral. Next All right, course. so while she finishes up the board, because mm -hmm. I know us, this much wine deep, we will talk, talk, talk. Oh, yeah, we'll yeah. do that. We're going to have you finish up the board completely while we talk about the red wine. So, magic of Hollywood, just kidding, <laughs> it's magic of my basement. Uh, we have changed Ooh. the red. I know. To tell. <laughs> <laughs> We've changed the red. This is actually one of my favorite Bordeaux's, and I'm going to explain why. Okay. It, it's La Rubla. It's a... Uh, when you say Bordeaux, a lot of people get intimidated by Bordeaux. They're yes. like, well, I don't even know what a Bordeaux is. I what am I drinking? Bordeaux is a region in France. That's it. Don't even get complicated beyond that. It's a region in France. It's like saying it's a Napa Valley it's, wine. It, but the name is what throws people off because it's French. A it's lot French. of people go, it's Red Blend, I like it. But it's Bordeaux. Sounds so much, it's you know, so high. You can charge a lot more money for think, Bordeaux than Red yeah. Blend. And you can. <laughs> I but love if you Bordeaux. think Red Blend, you're thinking on the right path and you can get as example this is an under $20 what? Bordeaux this what? is a 20 yeah this is a fantastic Bordeaux I I'm personally like am a huge <laughs> fan of having Bordeaux that have Cab Merlot and Cab Franc that's yeah. what this has that to me is my perfect combination because those are my three favorite varietals to mix together yeah and that's why I love it and that's why I love it and it's under 20 bucks now, when you hear Bordeaux and you hear about them going for an auction and it was in, you know, especially because I'm sorry, but China loves to buy our, you know, expensive Bordeaux and mm -hmm. to buy expensive wines. So those are usually over, you know, you hear the auctions all the time. Oh, it was like, you know, $20,000 for this, you know, vintage Bordeaux. Yeah, none of us Purchase. are going to try it. <laughs> I would love to tell you that I've tried it. I have not. Oh, I have it in my pantry. <laughs> I'll be over there more. A girl can dream. It's <laughs> aged enough, Brooke. Right. Open it up. <laughs> so yes, this is, you can buy a Bordeaux. Don't be scared. Don't even worry about the varietals if you've never tried it. Just go to your store. Yes. Pick out anyone that looks appealing to you and just try it. Yeah. This is gorgeous in the nose. Oh my gosh. Before you even taste it. Yeah, it, it smells amazing. It is, talk about berry and jam. That's my type of wine. Yeah. But see, it's intimidating Luscious. to hear Bordeaux. But, but I almost um, like it. So say, so this is under 20. You have a nice dinner party. You have the charcuterie going, okay. You bring out the Bordeaux. Okay. And you're like, well, let me let it breathe. <laughs> to, oh, <laughs> say it. Correct me, please. I've already been on the bad naughty list on this. Oh, no, I said the one that I'm adjusting. Oh, wait, no, it looks phenomenal. 
Um, but charcuterie in itself, I was gifted a lot of cute plates during my wedding, so I love having people over and having charcuterie, and what doesn't pair better than wine? So now, I will pair it with a Bordeaux and look really, you know, <laughs> I'll just hair flip it all. It's right. Oh, we're going over to Brooke's house? Look, we got charcuterie and Bordeaux. But well, what you need to do is hire Hannah. Oh, yeah, Hannah's coming yeah. over. We'll just get you a board, you I put it in the fridge, you pull it out, you no one will know. Yeah, yeah. right. You take no money for it. <laughs> I pull it out and no let it not. sit for a few hours because, God forbid, I pull it straight out of the fridge. Okay. I learned my lesson. Can I tell you, this is one of my favorite tricks that I learned from this woman the last time she was here for a class. She doesn't do this whole spread the cracker thing around. She stands them up. No, we don't like flat space here. No, okay, this is this we is good because it. guess guess Wait, guess we take guess it. Guess who puts the crackers? I know I, I'm one do of those. You, you lay them out and you spread them. We'd rather use the space for the salami no, and the prosciutto. Right. So you have something to like stage them in. Yeah, so you hold right. them in. I know it's not the most, but life changing. No, it's one hundred percent. Show us the prosciutto trick. I know. I know. And you pull out all the broken crackers. You only have. Pretty crackers, but that might just be me and our parent, like our aesthetic. No, no, no. Oh, no. I like all all pretty crackers. We're all ADD, ADD, OCD, <laughs> OCD, or all that. <laughs> we're all, we're all the uh, these. <laughs> all right. All right. She's gonna show us how she makes the prosciutto stand up. Okay, so this one is the one that you said you got from the supermarket. I do. It is super. And, and, uh, I love that prosciutto from the supermarket. It's really good. Yeah. It's all natural. It's gluten free. Um, and it peels easy, which is not the case with some prosciutto. No. And so and lived in Italy, and that prosciutto is. It peels really it's easily. Dirty. We have this one that's amazing. It's California, um, not California, but American made, like American raised pork. This it does not peel easy. I can't do this with that. It but tastes I amazing, I can't but I can't do that. this with that. I can't find that okay. in my supermarket. I can find that exactly. in my supermarket. Yeah. But so, no, don't eat the paper. There's so paper between these slices. Yeah. Don't, yeah. the don't eat the paper. Don't drink before too much you show us that, it, you won't eat can you tell us, um, you told me that you do sell some cheeses, so oh if you yes, do find a cheese that you like on our video, so we're going to put a link, if yeah. they want to buy it from you, can they buy the prosciutto? Yes, okay. absolutely, so we can buy the prosciutto, this one is available locally, but this one, um, we stop, so okay. they can okay. get it. Alright, so teach us your magic ways, I'm excited. Okay, so you pull off the prosciutto, okay. um, and it's kind of what we call the accordion effect, so you're just kind of layering oh. it. Um, if your prosciutto doesn't pull off nicely, this part gets very frustrating because it doesn't look as pretty, um, but you can even fold it in half and do the layer that way. So you just layer it like Is an accordion. Is it colder better? Is colder easier to work with, do you find? You know, sometimes it actually isn't. Oh. So depending on the um, like manufacturer, some places, oh. this... These ones are so nice because they're stiff. not too stuck together. Sometimes if they mm -hmm. stick them too close together, you go to pull them off and everything peels up together. Yeah. Oh, so if there, if there's like a lot in a stack and you know it's really, really boundly tight, no. just let it come to room temperature. Okay. And then, so once you have it, you, you pierce them at the bottom and okay. then you just stick them and you kind of like Perfect. push it down and then fan it out when it's off. Aw, that's so Wait, cute. That's so much easier than <laughs> I know. <laughs> just I just this like is great. The, the magic, thing. yeah. Sorry. I'm like behind I'm, the curtain. It's not as exciting. You, you need to realize that right now, and I'm sure Nikki feels the same way. I am critiquing myself and all the boards I have done before. Right, this I'm moment. thinking, first of all, so, it will make salami really, really easy for you, too. Um, this is a Suppressa from Criminelli. Um, they're one of our favorite American made salamaries. You just. Fold it, it and fold it, and, and then, then you stick it okay. together. And you use things to hold I it I have together. been a <laughs> proud moment. I've been able to do that. But as long as but, you're doing that, I'm but proud. But now I can do the rest. I'm so proud of you. You just can't so do proud. flat salami. We're, not, we're not proud of flat salami. <laughs> hey, I, you've got to do something with it. I am oh, I'm moving <laughs> I'm moving on from these lame charcuterie boards. I'm oh. moving on from Ziploc. I'm, I am hey, I am <laughs> graduating, damn it. I'm going to have much better next time. <laughs> well, yes, we are. <laughs> it's a Ziploc. <laughs> yes, yes. I said Our studio Ziploc. audience is getting crazy. Apparently. <laughs> So once Ooh, you fan everything this. out, um, it'll allow you, we usually Sorry. use square boards, but like I love the look of a round board, we just don't sell them. Um, we do, like we can build a board on anybody's board, but it's not an issue, but when you frame the outsides, you can start putting in your berries, you can start putting in your olives, you can start putting in your things that roll away, okay. and you have a border to keep them from falling off while still getting that piled upon look. Brilliant. So, so my little yeah. bowls, 86, this is the next. color thing to me because everybody's always like, 
the more color the better. And to me, I don't always have color at different times of year. Like there's certain things you can find in blueberries sure. and so on. Well, and with that, like it's easy. We have our dried stuff here. The only thing we'll keep in Ziplocs. There you go. Oh. <laughs> they are Ziplocs. We, we do it too. Um, <laughs> that's what your Ziplocs, your nuts. Um, we use dried oranges. So, oh, okay. um, a little dehydrated, love it. Yeah. So they'll break up the colors. I actually, I mean, we use dried flowers or um, edible florals and all of our stuff. I personally, I know this is where I want to put the olives, but I hate the color combination of red and green. Because I think that when you look at it, it automatically makes people think of Christmas. So we will be putting a flower right there to kind of break up the color. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So you use dried florals, you use dried oranges, you can get like dried pears, dried apples, anything like that. You just put it on top to kind of break it apart. Okay. So do you like the the jars also? That's the other thing that I always have like an odd jar in there, and it le it seems weird to me because then you have to have a knife or something in the jar. So this one we have actually our raspberry rosé jam. It's Ooh. excellent. It's one of the ones we use for Valentine's Day. Which they can buy on your site, I'm sure. Yeah, you can, okay. we can get it for you guys. But it pairs really nicely with this brie, and it pairs really nicely with this cheddar. So that's why we have it together with this. Um, just a spoon or just a knife, like a small knife. I wouldn't get a jam one. that's going to be like really anything like hard or really mm -hmm. stiff. Anything so that's like easy those, to spread. Those little mini little baby plastic things. forks and spoons that Gwen always has. It's yeah, those tiny ones. You get the yeah. appetizer. Yeah. Yeah. The appetizer. Yeah. 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 Store, honestly. Awesome. Yeah. And then you get your nuts. You want to make sure you have an assortment of fruits. We generally don't put our nuts or our dried fruits on until last, just to make sure that we have everything else that we want on there. Just so everybody knows, Gwen's place is very clean. <laughs> As we can hear right now, <laughs> sorry, but it's sorry. very clean, <laughs> nightly by professionals. <laughs> I'll send you their info. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably going to be on the line. Don't, don't, don't pick Tuesday night. Come on. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm cracking up. But I mean, I cannot. This is so this beautiful. Was fun. Right? I'm sorry, guys. This was a lot of fun. Though. <laughs> um. Wow. I'm gonna never be able to. This, so you're kind of yeah. clear, clearly. So here's here's what here's my question for you. I've got three questions. Yeah, here's one. Three, three one. questions. They're quick. They're rapid fire. fire. Julia, rapid two. fire. Um, what? Rapid two. Fire. Easy. <laughs> what's your uh, what's the weirdest cheese you've ever worked with? Oh, oof. Good um, honestly, probably this one. Really? It's oh. very stinky, and it, you can't cut it. And we ate it. It's stinky. You can't like cut it, it beforehand because it's it. so squishy. The it's top, like a sponge cake. The it's top is like <laughs> very yeah. spongy. It's, so good it's not something that somebody would like touch normally and be like, oh, this feels like a cheese. It's no. very odd. It is so spongy. convincing people that it's a great cheese is uh, um, <laughs> difficult. It's, it's you have to try it and you have to give it a chance. But with the the fresh orange, the fresh oranges that you have cut, you can't really smell them. No, you can't. I can only get it blends right now. So that makes me think. Then what's the most popular cheese that yes. people like? Yeah. It's was that one your question? It was. I know you're good. You, you know me. She still has one more than. We've been very lucky to have like brought in our uh, customers' taste buds to you know not supermarket cheeses. Like yeah. we try to put cheeses that we like that are different, that are exciting, that they can't find locally in our yeah. boxes to broaden their taste because that's what we feel like grazing is. It's an experience. You want to find new things. You want to find different tastes. Well, I'm grazing already. So, yeah. <laughs> I found so I just got a whip of that one hit me all of a sudden. I was like, yeah. Me too. Me too. I moved away from the cheese or the wine. We're not sure. <laughs> um, but, I mean, your cheddars, your manchegos are very popular because they're very mild cheeses, they're but they're still know. good. Yeah, they're, they're what people, people know. know. Yeah. So we like to put in a couple of things so that people awesome. know, and then a the couple of ones like this one, yeah. or like this one, or even a brie that's a little bit different than yeah. what people are used to seeing, right. just to get people, like, more experience trying them, because that's really what cheeses are about, is trying them, trying something new. Like, if you're going to pay for it, it needs to be really good quality cheeses that you can't awesome. find, so right. you can try it. And you're not having to go out and buy a bunch of cheeses yourself. Spend a ton Sad. of money at the yes. supermarket yeah. and hate them. Which is easy. So yeah. last but not least, oh, yeah. if you don't mind, how can we hire you That to was make my this? question, is that you said the word or pay for it, and my thought was, <laughs> how? I don't want to do it. I don't pay for it. How Since I, I use Ziploc bags, how can I get this <laughs> to my house? <laughs> we have website, Facebook, Instagram. We have a contact form on our website that just shoots us an email. But we also have our Facebook at those crazy, crazy girls. girls. Those crazy Everything, those crazy girls. and that's crazy with, with a G. G. Not you can 
crazy. <laughs> Your autocorrect will hate you. Crazy. It, is, it is with a G, I yeah, swear. Crazy. Slightly crazy, but we're crazy. Excuse me. Um, oh, no. And any of them will reach us. You do ship, but where is the farthest that you'll ship? Because I did look one time to try to ship it to somebody, and it was maybe not as far as. Well, so we do ship locally. Okay. So, like, if it's, like, still in Virginia, Maryland area, we can ship it overnight, and it's not, like, crazy expensive. Okay. We'll do that. We also have DIY kits, like, the ones we did at yours, okay. which we can ship a little bit further because we'll put them in the dry ice and everything. And they're more of an experience. You assemble them yourself, but we do okay. give instructions. But you already have done with the basic, and it's just like, here you go. We have all the ingredients. We give them, like, step by step, this is what you do. Um, awesome. You just assemble. Yeah. That's I, a fun I, night. I, yeah, I'm exactly. The main thing. A lot of our viewers are going to be oh wanting gosh. your services to impress their friends. When yeah, are you yeah. kidding me? I mean, this is literally a work of art. Look oh, at this. this is beautiful. This is, I mean, if you were so hungry, you'd really feel bad about diving this into this. Is, <laughs> I know the camera wants it, right. baby, baby. This is oh, absolutely geez. gorgeous. No, oh, oh, wait, she's not done. Oh, wait, there's more. Oh, oh wait, oh, wait. There's raw honey. There's more. Yeah, oh, it's on top honey. of the brie. I love that because, you know, one of those Stop. elements, too, is to put things that go together next to each other, right? Together. So This is incredible. She messes Gorgeous. with it, though. She's like, not quite right. I'm going to do it. No, no. So no, clearly, no. here's what I have to say, is if you are looking for a charcuterie board, I think this is 10 levels above a charcuterie board. This is a work of art, but you can have it to your home. Uh, great service. Clearly, amazing owner. Thank you oh, so yes. much no for coming Thank out. Thank you for joining us today. Yes. So I just wanted you guys, those crazy girls, find them on Facebook, the yes. web. Yes, crazy yes. girls. Anything, everything. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Bye.